Now this is a gentleman in the 70s who presented with severe bilateral buttock claudication. He had had his axial iliac system evaluated previously um, and had stents placed in the right common and in the left external. Uh, however, uh, he continued to complain of his uh, intractable buttock claudication such he could only walk approximately 30 to 40 feet. We initially approached him, <clears throat> having been somewhat pessimistic about our ability to revascularize the internal iliacs because of severe calcification, and we initially approached him from the arm. You can see um, we tried first down the left side, uh, and the you can see the calcification in the internal iliac. The cross there is a fused image. We really were completely unsuccessful in trying to cross the left side, largely because it was covered with a bare metal stem. We then approached the right side, and it took some time. However, uh, again, using a fused image, we marked what the origin was. We managed to get a wire which went down through this somewhat small and occluded internal iliac artery, <coughs> uh, and we advanced this uh, down into the pelvis. Uh, over this, basically, we advanced a catheter and confirmed uh, that we were, in fact, endoluminal. <coughs> We opted at that point then to uh, go ahead and uh, dilate the origin, uh, place a small balloon at the origin, and using a four millimeter balloon, uh, we dilated the origin and switched out to a stiffer wire uh, placed down in one of the branches of the internal iliac quadri. And you'll see that um, it's sufficiently calcified that it actually ruptures the balloon when we tried to dilate it. <laughs> And then you can see the rupture and some air escaping from that balloon. So at that point, we changed the wire out and now have, have stiff wire down there. The plan was really to place a uh, VBX stent into the uh, internal iliac artery. Uh, obviously, we did not want to compromise the external on that side, so we accessed the right groin, placed the wire retrograde. And using this technique, um, we wanted to protect the external iliac artery. We brought a six by four balloon down to further dilate the orifice and facilitate subsequent passage of the stent graft. You can see it being blown up in the internal iliac artery. As you would notice from the CT scan, uh, the it's a fairly long segment stenosis which was present here. Uh, the balloon was dilated up to uh, its profile and deflated and then replaced with BBX. Here you can see the uh, measurements which we were making. Uh, the concern here, of course, was the diameter of the common iliac artery. It only measured um, just under eight millimeters in diameter. We originally brought the stent up, uh, the stent graft up, attended to prolapse down the external iliac, and for this reason, we then brought up uh, a separate VBX to the origin of the external iliac artery. Um, when we inflated this, uh, this buttressed the VBX, which had been brought in from the arm, and allowed it to pass, to deflect off that balloon, pass down the internal iliac without any difficulty. Here you can see the VBX uh, being inflated flush with the origin of the internal iliac. Um, once that was up, it stabilized uh, the wire that prevented it from prolapse and down the external. And then we brought up um, the VBX from the arm, uh, and it passed fairly easily down into the internal iliac. Now, the plan was to use a 59 millimeter stent, uh, which was uh, 6 millimeters in diameter, uh, and then place a separate external iliac stent um, to essentially use a kissing technique uh, into the uh, common iliac. So you can see that the internal iliac stent has been positioned. The uh, stabilizing VBX uh, in the origin of the external iliac has been inflated. Uh, we then bring a separate VBX up through the external iliac stent, line it up uh, flush with the internal iliac VBX, and both of these will be brought up simultaneously. Period. We also uh, communicated with the anesthesiologist to keep an eye on the pressures as we deflated these. But we really had no problem that already clearly accommodated both of these being balloon these balloons being inflated simultaneously. Once the balloons were deflated, uh, we did a completion angiogram. And 
it showed fairly good flow both in the internal and external uh, iliac artery. Balloons being deflated and withdrawn. We initially shot retrograde. You can see it actually filling the internal and the external. What we were particularly interested in is looking at the flow into the buttock and the cross pelvic circulation, and it seemed to be very brisk. I can tell you that in follow-up, the patient was completely resolved of bilateral buttock claudication.